in association with Combat Sport Collective. Clothing for those who love combat sports. Uh, welcome to the Gibbons Talks Boxing YouTube channel. I'm joined by Commonwealth champion Gavin Gwynn. Um, Gav, good to see you, mate. Um, I, I don't think I've spoke to you since your fight f with Sean McComb for the Commonwealth title. So do you want to just give us a quick recap on that fight? You know, looking back on it now, was it uh, six, seven months ago or even longer, probably? Yeah, um, I think it was eight months. Eight, eight months. months or a long eight months, but um, yeah, got got a call for the Commonwealth title. Obviously, during lockdown, wasn't it? Um, it was supposed to be fighting out in Dubai, um, and then all that got cancelled. But so, like, I, I trained all over Christmas. I had Christmas Day off actually. I had Christmas Day off. Um, no treats or nothing, but trained all over Christmas. Probably one of the worst Christmas I've ever had in my life. Um, obviously, because I, I just enjoy the food and everything else, and I'm fun with the family. Like when, when once you're in training mode, everything goes out the window, and that's all. It's a bit selfish, really, but that's all you think about is boxing. But so, but then, um, we got a we got another date then for February. Um, uh, I've been Bolton, um, and I went and. Destroyed him really, and uh, destroyed him in his in on his home show, which I was the underdog. But really, and the boxing fans, the true boxing fans, knew that was too much of a step up for him. Um, and I pulled off the win, but really, did, did you feel him wilting mentally and physically during the fight as the fight progressed? Um, yeah, I, I got in the first round, but um. I was catching him with shots and he was catching me with clean shots and it, it was like nothing in the shots. Like, and uh, I knew like from round one, um, I think it was in round two, I caught him and I backed him up and uh, the bell went and I done like a muscle man pose. <laughs> <laughs> Camera. Um, and I, I just knew, I just knew I, I was going to be too much for him, but I was too, I was too big. I was too strong. Um, and and that was the case. Uh, he just turned his back in the end and didn't want to know. Were you surprised the way he? Well, I don't like to use the word quit, but the way he pulled himself out of the fight, if you like. Yeah. Um. He had like one last half, uh, like started hitting me on the body, and I went, "Come on, <laughs> <laughs> like, there's, there's nothing great enough." Like, and um, he was like, and then I caught him. I think I caught him with a clean right hook up a cut combination hit his head back and and that was it he just turned his back I thought he was going to take a knee so I went to follow it up and I could see him, his head turn round and I went to throw right down and the ref right jumped in and that was it yeah it was a bit mad like really but did you speak to Sean after the fight in the change rooms or anything did you have a word with him um not really um we were both getting, I had, a, had stitches on the back of my head. Um, he had stitches over both of his eyes. So we were getting stitched up opposite each other and I had a pack of Harry bows and offered him a Harry bow. <laughs> but other than that, I didn't really talk. He was just, he was probably gutted when he, um, that was his uh, coming out, supposed to be coming out fight really, but I put Did a stop. Did you feel you, you silenced some of your critics or some of your doubters with that um, win? Yeah, hundred percent. Because obviously, um, I I boxed for the British title twice, losing on both occasions, and like they were massive step ups. They weren't like the the level I was fighting. They weren't British level fighters, like. Um, but obviously, the public don't don't they don't see that. Obviously, they were world level fighters, but obviously, old in the British title. But and then, but everyone doubted me. Like I knew it as well, so. I didn't want to prove them wrong. I wanted to prove to myself that I knew I, I was capable of winning like a, a major title. And I, I knew in myself I was I was more than capable of winning the major title, really. Yeah. And uh, sort of between then and now, um, a few times you, you've put on social media that you've got a big fight coming up and nothing really materialised for various different reasons. I bet that was a really frustrating uh, period for you. Yeah, um, obviously, boxing politics and everything else aside, it was just down to um, money and funding for the 
for these shows to have, obviously have the the title fights on on the shows, but I was just I just want I I just like fighting. To be honest, with you I just want to get out there and just fight. Like it's, it's one thing I love doing, but nothing ever come to fruition. And I was just it was it was big got them because it's the only time I've been full time fighting as a pro and no fights coming off. So I was just really got it. I was training twice a day, every day. And I was for the past like six months, I'd just been flat out and nothing come, come. And then uh, all of a sudden S O C wanted to put a show on and uh, here we are. I think it's 10 days away now. So, so uh, S O C uh, Swansea, also LC2, uh, yeah. Leisure Centre or Arena, whatever you want to call it. Um, live on S4C across the UK. You fight in uh, Jack O'Keefe. Yeah. Uh, what can you tell us about Jack? Um, I don't know a lot about him, if I'm honest. Um, I know he's, uh, was he Seven Area or Midlands? Something like a Midlands, I think. A Midlands Area champion. Um, uh, lost in his first defence so. Um, I'm I other than that I don't really know he's only boxed like you you know where it's like coming through the ranks the 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 journeyman and people like that but other than that that's that's all I know about him um obviously it's his it's his big opportunity like like I've had myself I know what is I know what it feels like being the underdog so I know what it's like being in his shoes and how much how much hard work you put in just to put on a good performance like so I know he's going to come and give it his all but um, I just don't think his all is going to be enough on the night really if I'm honest Is this fight a little bit similar in that in terms of you fighting um, Sean McComb in that Sean was the guy um, everyone was expecting big things from and then you were the underdog come under the radar if you like is Jack O'Keefe is he in a similar position now where, where you've got a Keep keep your eye on the game and not slip up and not underestimate this guy. Yeah, hundred percent. And um, obviously, um, me being me, I know for a fact he he's gonna be training not nonstop, twenty four seven, like 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 I do myself. Um, he's gonna try and upset the upset the odds, like so. Um, I prepared for everything and. I know I think I've got enough in the tank. I've been in the much bigger fights, um, more experience, been um, in, involved in four 12-round fights. So um, I should I should do the I should have the more experience in the fight and should really put on the show and a big performance. If I wanna if I want the big fights in the new year, I need to put on a I need to put on a really good performance. Um, has your trainer Tony Borg and your manager um, uh, Chris Anaga have they studied O'Keefe? I mean, they try to get footage of him, and have they seen him on the on the circuit, if you like, around the country? Yeah, Tony has been um, on the look of footages and things like that of him. Um, I think Lee Selby sparred him once. He he jumped in. He was up there. Lee was sparring one of his gym mates and jumped in to give him a couple of rounds. So he just. Give me a couple of point pointers and whatever else, like so. But I'd leave all that down to Tony and what he wants me to do in the ring, and we just work on it in the gym, on the pads, on the bags, on the shots we're going to throw. Um, we've obviously got a couple of game plans, um, and then I just got to ex execute it on the night. So uh, you mentioned uh, a few minutes ago that. You're now a full-time pro, whereas in the past, believe it or not, people might not realise this, that you, you used to work on a building site, I'm thinking right in, say, in a scaffolder. Yeah. No, um, I was shuttering carpenter. Uh, oh, right, so okay. Right. Feel are they considered better than scaffolders, or were they in yeah. the second order? A little bit more money, yeah, a little bit more money. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was, I was, I'd, I'd go to work at 7 o'clock in the morning, I'd be on with like 3, 4 o'clock. But I'd be up at four o'clock running the roads. I could get home, have a shower. I'd done that for the first like well, there's only there's only since um January just gone now. Um uh 
that I turned full full time, and that's just down to the the sponsors. And I just want to say a massive thank you to each and every one of them. Like without them, it wouldn't be possible. And I think I I think I needed to uh, to go full time to see the benefits. Um, I went full time for I think it was seven or eight weeks for the Sean McCoon fight, and that was only ten percent of my potential showing in that fight. Um, I've had I've had eight months now of being full time pro. Um, I think we'll see. Uh, I think we'll see uh, the benefits on the twenty seventh. Um, if if you have a look at my Instagram, the photos of the shape I'm in and everything else. It's probably the best shape I've ever been in my life. Like making weight, I just I just finished training now. I have ten stone jumping off the scale, so I'm having a good <laughs> feed. Like so, yeah. Yeah, I suppose for you going from having a, a full time job and trying to mix your training up with it, I know I know you have breaks from your job in the lead up to the fight. I suppose there is a massive difference for you just just to be able to dedicate yourself one hundred percent to boxing. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, that's all I'm thinking about now is boxing. I'm getting the, the right amount of rest in. Whereas I was boxing these boys before, and they were they were full time, and I wasn't. And you could see, you could see, uh, and it makes all the difference. You need the right amount of rest, and like I'm I'm doing my strength conditioning twice a week, whereas before I was just doing it once on a weekend because the work was getting in the way and. And other things, and I'm, and we get to work on things in the gym technically now. Whereas before, I was just working on getting fit, and nothing else. Mm-hmm. So, so I, I think, I think that will all come to, to, to show now on the twenty seventh. I think that's one of the big myths about boxing and boxers. People think, well, I, I used to do it as well before. If if you see a boxer on television, one you presume he's earning massive money. Million. <laughs> and two, you just presume that that's his only job. He's just living the boxing life. Whereas in reality, it's probably only a very small percentage that are, are lucky enough to be able to do that. Yeah, like um, obviously, if you go to the Olympics and on a big platform straight away. Um, whereas, like myself, I started off in the the small hall shows selling tickets. Um, and then obviously you get picked to go on these big shows and you get your name out there and um. Hopefully, then a big promoter will start putting you on their shows and start promoting you. Yeah, that's the that's that's the that's the plan for every boxer, really, coming from the small shows. And one one question I had for you, I was thinking this earlier when we set up the interview, who christened you the the Murtha Mexican? Where did that name come from, or was that just a name that you were no. through your style, or was it did somebody give it to you? Can you pin it down for somebody? Um, it was a couple of years back. Me and Lee uh, Salby were out in LA. Uh, training camp before I was supposed to fight for a Celtic title if you remember a um, couple of years back now um, and I had an injury um, but in that training camp I was out in LA and um, I was sparring with a, a welterweight um, a Mexican welterweight and um, he was he was promoted by Golden Boy and he had like 14 fights uh, 13 knockouts so Chris was like right don't go take me anything clean now. Don't go. T- I'm gonna tear up with him. Um, and I, me being me, he caught me with a shot, and I was like, "Ain't hey, no this." So I stuck it on him, and um, we had a war for like I think it was six or seven rounds, and all the people on the outside were banging in the ring and everything else. Like they were loving it. Like and um, the guy come out, he said, uh, "Where are you from?" I, I and me being me, not Wales, Murtha. <laughs> 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 and he was like the Murtha Mexican and the guy the guy went and uh, yeah but uh, that's where that come from oh, okay. what was it Maywood the Maywood boxing gym it was this guy who's in there it was like a, they, they were like a Mexican it was, it was like a Mexican gym it was hmm. it, it just seems the last maybe I know since, since the win, win over um, Sean the name seems to have really stuck yeah yeah it's um, I think I've stuck the way I fight as well is on, <laughs> like, um, obviously with tennis, and I, I, I tried to stick to a, a game plan where I was just boxing the back foot, but any other fight, um, bar that one, I go forward, don't stop throwing shots, I don't care what I'm getting it with, uh, so I think that, uh, that nickname suits me well.
And I think you mentioned there starting off on the small hall circuit and working your way up. I think it's partly down to your style. People like watching you, you're fun to watch. TV, yeah. people watch on TV, TV audience. Uh, will yeah. be on social media about you, the promoters will notice you. And it's probably just through that as well, I think. And your hard work, obviously, has gone into these positions. Oh, definitely. Um, um, no one likes a boring fight. I know it's, it's, it's good for you. It's, it's good, obviously good for your health, like not taking shots and things like that. But um, I like it. Yeah, I like being in the tear up. But if I'm honest with you, I've never come out of a fight without the black guy. So that says it all. Except my first couple of fights against like um, journeyman things like that. But uh, other than that, the people who, who come and have a go, like I, I just don't. I just, I just love it. I just love having the scrap. <laughs> And uh, your last fight against Sean, that was on, I think it was on the IFL TV yeah. channel. This fight was on S4C, um, yeah. obviously Welsh language television channel, but it has been broadcast across the UK. So what yeah. was it like to be boxing back on Trestle TV? Yeah, um, I boxed on, I think it's, this is my fourth time on S4C, is it? So um, just massive thank you for for them for broadcast, broadcasting the the boxing and giving us giving us an opportunity to show our skills off to to the nation really so um yeah it's it's, it's brilliant um and like obviously I've in the past I've boxed on it and gone on to bigger things so obviously the boys again the opportunities as well on the on the undercard again on um again on SOC and giving them the opportunity to uh, show their skills off and um, and then hopefully for them go on to bigger and better things as well then. I think I told you before that, I think I told you the story, when when I was commentating on your fight with Myron Mills, with yeah. myself and Guy Lockett, I think um, John Harden, I think it was doing the commentary, and yeah. when you were reading the scorecards out, like me, Gary, we thought you clearly won the fight, but yeah. I was trained now, was it um, Clifton Mitchell, is it? Yeah, Clifton Mitchell. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he sort of said to me, look, he leaned across to me and Gary and said, who do you think won? And he said, oh, Gavin. And he just went crazy, he just sort of shouted at me and got well, shot with Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was yeah. like, I'm going Gary. I said, I'll deal with Gary, not me. But yeah, he was, he was a great goal. Was, yeah. <laughs> but, but that was a brilliant fight in, t- in yeah. terms of the way you were able to change your tactics almost a third of the way through the fight. Things weren't going your way. You were getting picked off. And then Tony told you whatever you needed to be told and you just turned your style around and you, you just sort of clearly won in the end. Yeah, um, that was a great fight and uh, he's a great fighter and he's gone on, like, obviously he's beat uh, Lucas, uh, I can never say his second name, Baganelli, is it? I'm not sure I don't know, I haven't followed his career really. Yeah, really good fighter, um, really good fighter he is and... Um, I think it was the third round. Tony said to me, "Look, we're not going to be able to outbox this guy. Uh, you're going to have to rough him up, put it on him, and um, and just try and get, and to, yeah, just get in his face and not let him box and use his range and his, do you know what I mean? So and and that was the plan. And uh, obviously, I I I I I went and done that straight away in the round after, and I started putting it on him and. Uh, the same again, he fell apart as well, didn't he? As soon as I started putting my shots together and walking through him, it was just like, um, yeah, he just didn't know what to do then because someone was coming back at him with shots. And it's like most of these fighters, um, and like they go to like 15 and 0 and they haven't boxed anyone. Mm. Um, I, bo- I boxed how many? I boxed three undefeated fighters and I've only had 15 fights, like. I think it's it's good for these boys coming through now. Um, lost to there. Oh, sorry, but I think it's good for these fighters now um, coming through. Like I've obviously five six fights, just progressing, getting the rounds in, and then get maybe a step up, but sooner rather than later because they get stepped up when they're like thirteen and fourteen and all, and they get stepped up and they get against them half decent opponent and they get put away really. Yeah, so I, 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 so, so I was just going to say, I, I personally think um, that the Welsh title should be fought at earlier in boxers' careers, whereas now boxers, well, look, you've got Gary Goodrich and Morgan Jones, just for example, they both yeah. have around 15, 16 fights each. 
maybe yeah. the Welsh titles we fought that around the sort of three or four fight mark. Yeah, hundred percent. I think it was my fifth. Was mm. was it my fight there boxer Welsh title? You are sorry, Matt. Was it my fifth fight there boxer? Like Henry James was it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was a massive learning fight for myself. Like, um, I I learned loads from that fight. Um, obviously, listen to Tony because all his game plan went out the window, and we just <laughs> in the beat, um, just went toe to toe for <laughs> ten <laughs> rounds. Um, but what a great fight that was! And um, I think a lot of these prospects now are there as well. They afraid of losing the winning records. They want to go undefeated. Um, but the, most of them are going to be in for a big shock because the only people who go undefeated uh the, the very special ones. Look, look at the likes of Canelo. He's not, he's not undefeated. Mm. So that just goes to show. Like. And even, well, just, just a two example, uh, three examples of undefeated boxers. Rocky Marciano, they, people say that he had a, 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 a loss overturned right at the start of his career. Joe yeah. Calvaghi was lucky, some people think, against... Robin Reed, yeah, and you yeah. had because Floyd Mayweather. A lot of people think, and most people think, he, he should have lost against Castillo the first time. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. it's unbeaten records that that they needed a bit of luck to keep their unbeaten records. Yeah, uh, like, and people think you're done as soon as you lose your winning record. People think you're you're done and you chuck them in a in the bin, like sort of thing. But like you learn from the losses. I think I'm the loss early on in your career. Like I learned from the loss to Joe Cordina. I knew what I had to do. I went went back in the gym and worked on things and come back with a stoppage win against another Olympian in the first round. But then um I got stepped up against James Tennyson, who boxed for a world title, who's a probably the biggest puncher in the world at lightweight and I thought I was winning that fight I thought I was winning on points and just caught, got caught with a massive punch it was just but it's all, it's all learning fights like I'd never turn down a fight whereas I know some of these fighters they'll turn down fights and think oh no that's too hard I can't win that one sort of thing but you just got to roll the dice sometimes do you know what I mean Okay, Gav, I'm just looking at it now. I said I'd keep you about five, ten minutes, and it's been about 20 minutes now. So um, no uh, just, uh, just the last um, mention, um, is, is the ticket still available for your fight now, or are they all, have you given all, all those back? Um, I'm giving the tickets back on Sunday. Right. I've, I've got a few £50 left. I think I, I think it's 10 £50 tickets left. Um, i got ringside tickets, the £100 ringside tickets as well left. Yeah. Okay, so if, if anyone wants tickets, they can get hold of you for those by Sunday? Yeah, if they want to get hold of me, um, just drop me a message on Facebook, Instagram, um, and I'll come and drop them off to you, no problem. And uh, just, just finally, before we go, um, have you got any mention for your fans, the, the army of uh, Merthyr Mexicans who come and cheer you on in all your fights? Yeah, um, just a massive thank you to all the fans. Um, for buying tickets and supporting me and supporting me obviously for, for all through COVID as well like um, they're all they're all been there um, uh, just want to say a massive thank you and I can't wait to put on the show for everyone now on the 27th uh, it's going to be bouncing because I've sold nigh on to, like just over 200 tickets so it's going to be bouncing and I can't wait <laughs> Okay then mate um, thanks for your time this evening uh, it's been really good to catch up with you I'll yeah. see you on the way in in Swansea next uh, Friday. And uh, okay. good luck for the fight on Saturday, man. Nice one. Thank you very much, yeah. man. Till later, John. Till later, Bye-bye. Bye-bye.